was kind of funny. Why is this the way to deal with climate change and Oregon's contributions to that? What excites us about the Clean Energy Jobs Bill is it harmonizes with the progress we've already made and can actually work together to drive down our emissions and create these clean energy benefits. So, for example, we are trying to increase the amount of renewables that power our utilities. That means they will pay less under this program, energy rates stay more stable as you invest in clean energy, and additionally, now there are incentives to go beyond the slow tread they have toward decarbonizing to actually accelerate that and provide more clean energy faster for Oregonians. And when you look at the other policies that we've put into place over the years, they get at the goals and the decrease of emissions, but they don't actually get us to our goals. And so putting a price on carbon is really the last um, kind of final piece to this puzzle to ensure that we actually can start bending the cost curve. How you put a price on carbon is different. And the reason this one, you know, why we feel so strongly about clean energy jobs is that it not only, it doesn't just say what you can't do, right? It doesn't just put a cap and say, we're done. It says, you can't do this, but we want to invest in this and we want to help you get there. And so I think it's a much more reasonable and impactful way. And we can actually reach people across the state instead of it just being kind of a, an environmental reg regulation. Is it fair to focus on 100 roughly uh, emitters, companies, and organizations, as opposed to the rest of us who pollute the air by sitting in line at Starbucks or at the bank or whatever without mm -hmm. turning off our engine? So, yeah, so the, the way the bill is structured is it it's, it's, uh, covers 87% of Oregon's greenhouse gases. So it's a pretty comprehensive look, and that comes down to a hundred entities providing that um, mm -hmm. at the oil company level and the utilities and some of our biggest manufacturers. And then it incentivizes people like us to uh, spend and it, it, pre it creates incentives for me to be able to um, weatherize my home mm -hmm. or you know choose to do energy efficiency where maybe I couldn't afford it before. Um, it, it helps drive the fa energy efficiency costs down because there's more investments in it. So I think it isn't an either or, it's the way we can get to the 87%. The other pieces, some of the laws that we already have in place, take care of the rest. And it is up to all of us, but we're paying a much out of proportionate cost for this climate pollution that's being put into the air. Well, the folks that are doing 87% of the damage are doing are literally paying nothing other than whatever the kind of normal costs we all share as just being, you know, part of the Oregon economy. We just spent $307 billion as a nation paying for the climate disasters last year. And that's not going to come out of the profits or the, you know, kind of that's not built into the bottom lines of a lot of our out-of-state oil companies who will pay into this. So it's also money that should be rectifying some of the the issues um, that they're causing. It's not trying to put a huge penalty on one person versus the other. It's just saying, I pay to take my garbage out, right? Because I do. And I'm just one person and I'm one household. So I pay a reasonable fee to do that. If the big company isn't paying to clean up their air or clean up the garbage that they're putting out, just because we can't see it doesn't mean it's not there, right? And that's part of how we've been able to kind of skirt this issue for so long is, is you can't see the carbon. So we've all just kind of accepted it as the way it is. Um, but now that we're seeing the dramatic shifts in our climate, we can't accept it as it is. We have to do something different and people aren't going to change just because we want them to. Not in, not in our not in our system, right? We don't incentivize that. 